You are listening to The Spearline Podcast. Hi all, you're listening to the new Spearline Podcast. My name is Joshua Farrell. In today's episode, we're covering the role of a CTO. And in the second half of the show, we will have a discussion on how remote working can benefit your company. So, I'm joined here today by Matthew Lawler. Hi, Matt. Hi, Josh. So, before we get into discussion of where things are and what you are working to, on today, could you give us a brief synopsis on your background and how you got to where you are now? Yeah, I suppose. Um, well, I'm co-founder of the company as well, so I was one of the original employees, I would say. I'm originally a, a computer programmer, mm. um, so wasn't like I was a CTO at Spearline from day one or anything. So as the company grew, it's the role I grew into. Mm-hmm. I've been always the more... Uh, so the company was founded by uh, myself and Kevin Buckley. Uh, he was always much more commercially based while I was much more technical based. Yeah. Um, so it was just the, the natural progression of where things went. But I'd say still very much a computer programmer, like still diving into code and oh, that's yeah. still close to heart. Yeah. <laughs> so being a CTO involves managing the short and long term needs of the company and taking a leadership role for your employees. Um, could you possibly describe your leadership style? Yeah. I suppose I probably the furthest thing from a micromanager you can get. Um, I think really it's a case of we have a company strategy and we have products and roadmap to align with that strategy. Mm-hmm. And I think really it's a case of we're very lucky that we've hired people who are really expert. There a lot of people a lot smarter than me on that team. <laughs> um, so wants to know what direction the company's going, what needs to get done to be there. They're well able to figure it out. And I'd say I'm very much of more supporting role for them to carry it out and um, just dealing with any problems and working around problems that might arise to get a solution and the um, ultimately the, the one that benefits the com- customer the most. Oh, that's a very modest answer. So um, so since I started working here um, at Spearline, I've noticed it's got a very calm yet fast-paced work environment. Um, however, when the going gets tough, how do you, how do you motivate your uh, team in challenging situations? Ultimately, it's we avoid them um, as much as possible because being in the like uh, coming from a startup company um, when there is very few employees, like I have been on the ones being up in the middle of the night trying to firefight a problem um, and uh, trying to work out solutions. So now it's definitely very much a case of like the company's grown. So we are able to look at what's the possible problems that can come up, like from an infrastructure point of view. Um, from like all of our databases, web servers, everything like that. Mm-hmm. And I think the Amazon cloud is amazing for us that we're allowed to, we're able to build a solution that's very reliable, scalable, there's failover and everything like that. So really it's ultimately a case of if something does go wrong, it's very easy for us to mitigate against that and have a solution that the customer doesn't have any kind of impact and we can avoid those late nights trying to firefight a <laughs> problem. Next, we talk to Mike Palmer, the Chief Marketing Officer in Spearline, about how remote working can benefit your company. Could you quickly give us a rundown on what exactly remote working is? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's something I do myself and many of us here at Spearline do. Um, I'm in the office three, four days a week. I'm at home two, three days a week. Sometimes depends on the week and, and what the schedule is. Uh, but remote working, teleworking, telecommuting, commu- uh, commuting, whatever it might be, you know, people are working differently these days. Um, and from a business perspective, what it's allowing is businesses um, to tap into a much broader skill set. You know, so there's a huge market. If you look at all of Europe, all of the world, et cetera, you can get the right people to perform the right task, regardless of their location. It's not about everybody, yeah. in our case, you know, transferring their, their livelihoods into West Cork. They can do what they're doing from wherever they happen to be, as long as they have the, the motivation to do that. So for businesses, it's great. For local communities, it means that uh, people in kind of rural areas as opposed to urban areas now have access to livelihoods like they didn't have before. Um, so, and that's fantastic. And that mm-hmm. changes the whole nature of economic kind of distribution. So people in small towns are now earning their livings in small towns. They're able to spend in small towns. Local merchants in small towns are benefiting. That's fantastic. Those people who are teleworking are not driving into those big congested urban centers. So, you know, they're not burning fuel. They're not wasting their time. They're not, you know, so it's good for the environment. It's good for society, I think. Um, For me, I find that on days when I'm at home in my home office environment, when I've got a nice long list of to-do items, 
without any distractions, um, I can tick all of those boxes and I can do an awful lot of stuff that I can do with my head down and be focused. Yeah. There's other days when I much prefer to be physically inside the the office building where I can interact with people on a more informal basis. Yeah. But for the kind of happy medium, you know, using telecommunications tools so that I can have conversations throughout my day. Um, I can actually collaborate and screen share documents or presentation material or whatever it might be that we're working on. Um, and if I choose to, um, you know, I can use video as well. So all of those modalities are there, whether collaborating or using video though, you know, we lean on voice, you know, it's about, it's about communicating. I need to express to somebody what's going on in a particular business project or a particular problem area. Um, and they need to digest that and, and help me out or I need to help them out. And that's done through a conversation. So the voice yeah. element is critical. Mm -hmm. So I, going from that there, that would you advise more companies to uh, implement remote working if they haven't already? I think so. You know, yeah. I've, I've heard, I think it's a trend. I think it's, it's the way people are going because as individuals, we want a higher quality of life, you know, and, and sometimes being stuck in traffic is not the quality of life that we're looking for. So we do have to be aware of that. Um, as businesses, uh, I've I've heard astronomical figures about, you know, addresses, office addresses now in the center of London or center of New York. You know, the cost to put an employee at a desk is nearly the same as the cost to employ, you know, so the wages versus the, the facilities cost. So if we can get more flexible with the way we use office as a structure mm -hmm. um, and allow people the flexibility that suits their their own lifestyle and and living arrangement. That's that's got to be good for both business and individual. Um, and studies do indicate that where the organizational culture is embracing the whole remote working, productivity does not dip. It actually goes up. You know, mm -hmm. people remain connected to what's going on in the business um, because of the less distractions, perhaps or whatever. They're getting through much more workload. Um, and they're much sharper at their own, you know, task. Their their expertise is second to none, and they're loving what they do, and they stay longer with the business. Yeah, They're motivated and happy in their work, you know. If you would like to find out more about how Spearline can help you, please contact us at spearline.com. And for more insights and in-depth interviews like these, you can subscribe to the Spearline Podcast channel. And don't forget to check out Spearline.com, where you can find all of our latest articles, white papers, and much more. Till next time, and thank you for listening to the Spearline Podcast.